Turn in your Bibles, if you will, please, to Colossians chapter 3. And just two verses today, verses 18 and 19, will be our text. We're making our way through this epistle, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And so I'll ask you to stand. You can follow along as I read. Uh, Or if you want to remain seated, that's fine. Where you're seated is fine. The Apostle Paul is continuing now by the Holy Spirit, writing to this church there in Colossae. And he says, verse 18, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, verse 19, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. It's pretty self-explanatory, so let's just close in prayer, and we'll get right to the... (laughs) Let's pray. Lord, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for this portion that we have here now before us here in your word. Lord, we need the Holy Spirit, though, to give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive that which you have for us today, here in this, your church, with us as your people. We ask you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. So I bet you're wondering what I'm going to be talking about today. (laughs) I hope that today's teaching will be of some help and some encouragement concerning marriage. Now, for those of you who are here today and you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not married. Can I be excused? No, you cannot. We have the security detail out front. They will make sure that you're not able to. (laughs) I say that jokingly, but there is a serious side to what I just said, and it's this. Marriage is a microcosm, a picture, if you will, of our relationship with Jesus the Christ as the bridegroom and us, the church, as the bride. I don't know if it's possible to overstate the importance of the Christian marriage in that regard, for that reason. And by the way, for those of you that are here today and are married, this is why it is that Satan hates your marriage. This is why it is that Satan will do everything and stop at nothing when he attacks your marriage. He hates your marriage because of what your marriage represents. So I want to talk to you today about the Christian marriage. And more specifically, what what does that marriage look like? What does a good Christian marriage look like? What will it be like? And we have here in just two verses, I mean, it, it ever so simply sums it up. But there's a problem. Sadly, the text that we have before us today has been the source of much in the way of misunderstanding. And here's why. It's this misinterpretation 
in which a biblical truth is taken to an unbiblical end, particularly when it comes to our understanding of what the word submit actually means. Now, wives, I need to ask you to be gracious. Do not elbow your husband today. Um, I am going to talk mainly to the husband today, because this is where the problem is. Please listen very carefully. Our wives are to submit to us, right? Amen. Preach a brother. But do you really understand what that means? Maybe I can ask it this way. Do you know what comes packaged with that? The responsibility that is yours as the husband in that marriage? This word submit is, I wish it, there were a different English word. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if it's English, it could be an Arabic word, just a different word besides the word submit. Submit to me, woman. Guys, don't ever say that to your wives. <laughs> The word submit carries with it this idea of rank and authority in the sense of the military having different ranks. You have generals, you have colonels, you have majors, you have captains. On uh, Tuesday, my daughter had the privilege of singing the national anthem for a retirement on the USS uh, Missouri. And the keynote speaker was a two-star admiral. And I don't know, it, it was, first of all, she crushed it. <laughs> Thank you very much. But anyway, um, just saying, they were blown away, right? And, but I just, the respect when that two-star admiral would walk there on the ship, and everybody would stand to attention and submit to his rank. I mean, from what I understand, and I maybe need to be corrected if I'm wrong, but I was told that in the United States of America there are only like 12 two-star admirals. They don't have any more five-star that I'm aware of, and it's very rare to have even a four or a three-star. Am I right, Mac? Is that about right? There's more than 12, yeah. But this is what it means in terms of ranking. That's what the word submit means in the context of the Christian marriage. See, God has given the husband that ranking, that authority. And it's a higher rank, but that does not mean that the man is superior to the lower rank. The woman is not inferior to the man because the man has been given the higher rank. Warren Wiersbe explains it best this way. He says, Anyone who has served in the armed forces knows that rank has to do with order and authority, not with value or ability. Just as an army would be in confusion if there were no levels of authority, so society would be in chaos without submission. One of the things that stood out in this retirement ceremony was the order. 
It was so orderly because of the rankings. Now, if this sounds a little bit like what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesian church in chapter 5, that famous chapter, that well-known chapter, that's because the Apostle Paul wrote this (laughs) in Ephesians chapter 5. He actually expounds on what it really means for the woman to submit to her husband. And you might be shocked to know that it's not as we've been taught that it is. The onus is on the husband to love his wife. It's interesting, and I just had a wedding a couple weeks ago, and I did it again, and um, this time without warning. Usually if I know the groom, I'll, I'll kind of give him a heads up ahead of time and let him know that I'm going to you know, talk a little bit about what the Apostle Paul says to the husband in Ephesians 5 about loving his wife three times. He says to the husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her. Husbands, love your, and I'm looking at the husband the whole time, the wife, I'll I'll be right with you, sweetheart. I need to talk to your groom for just a moment here because the onus is on him. Oh, there's something for you too, but I need to start with him because three times, The husband is told to love his wife. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her. Love your wife as you love and care for your own body. Love your wife as much as you already love yourself. Sometimes I like to have a little bit of fun Okay, a lot of fun. (laughs) uh... And I'll ask the groom, after I've just read where three times in Ephesians 5, he is exhorted to love his wife that much and that way. And I'll ask him, how are you going to do that? And I love the response. It's usually like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. How am I going to do that? The only way you're going to be able to do that is by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and keeping Jesus Christ at the center of your marriage. The onus is on you, sir, as the husband, to love your wife. It's interesting. Uh, not once does the Apostle Paul say to the wife, wives, love your husbands. I don't, I don't find it anywhere. But what you do find is uh, wives respect your husbands. But it's like this, three times, love your wife, love your wife, love your wife. Then to the wife and, and wives, respect your husbands. What? So the husband is told three times to love his wife, and only once, just, just, it's almost like an afterthought at the end of the verse, chapter 5, I think it's verse 28, you can look it up. Paul says, and wives, submit to your husbands. Respect your husbands. What's Paul saying? (laughs) Paul, by the Holy Spirit, is saying that if your husband will love you that way, you will not be able to resist respecting Him, because that's the way God made you. In other words, you show me a wife that's loved that much, I'll show you a wife that has respect for her husband and has no problem submitting to her husband in that way. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones had this to say, 
No husband is entitled to say that he is the head of the wife unless he loves his wife. So the reign of the husband is to be a reign and a rule of love. It is a leadership of love. And that leadership of love, in many respects, is by way of your example. And I'll explain why I say that. Before Paul even says to the husband, love your wife, he says in verse 21 of Ephesians 5, this first. And it's kind of interesting, guys, because we kind of leave this part out. I mean, oh, we're, we're quick. We, we memorize and quote verses, you know, like we just read here in Colossians. Wives, submit to your husbands. Amen. Um, you know what? Before any of that, Maybe you should uh, quote verse 21 in Ephesians 5 first. Some of you are already there. I like that. You know what it says? Listen to this. <laughs> Wait for it. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wait, what? You mean the husband's supposed to submit to the wife? Say, well, I, that ain't going to happen in my home. I'm the head of my house. All right. Uh, your wife's the neck, though. So you, <laughs> I wear the pants in my family. Yeah, but maybe uh, your wife can make a suggestion which pants to wear. I have yet, as a pastor, to provide biblical counseling to a married couple that humbled themselves and submitted one to the other. If pride is at the center of all marital conflict, and it is, then wouldn't it stand to reason that humility would be the solution to marital conflict? Okay, I can do this because my wife's not in this service. She'll be in second service. It'll be a completely different message. <laughs> I just want to share with you in my own marriage course. You can always go online and watch this. So I'll just have to block the link on her computer. But anyway, <laughs> early on in our marriage, I mean, and I, I've shared this. I'm. I'm very open, very candid with just how much of a jerk I was as a husband. My, my wife and I this year will celebrate 31 years of marriage. And oh, how, oh well, yeah, thank you. Praise the Lord. But I, I have to tell you that early on, I just wish I would have known then what I know now. It would have saved me so much in the way of, I mean, you know how it is when you don't talk to each other and you're out of fellowship, you're giving each other a silent treatment. She needs to come to me. She's wrong. You know what she's saying over there? He needs to come to me. He's wrong. And sometimes, you know what's sad? That can go on for days. It reminds me of the story I heard about this uh, guy that said, hey, you know, my wife and I, we made a decision that we will never let the sun go down on our anger. We resolve no matter what it takes or how long it takes to resolve the conflict before we go to bed. Sometimes it's like two o'clock in the morning. 
But finally, my wife will come crawling on her hands and knees to me. And she'll say to me, come out from underneath that bed and fight like a man, you coward. So it goes on for days. What would happen if, guys, I'm talking to you, the onus is on you, leadership by example, what would happen if, well, first of all, if, if your wife is anything like my wife, she'll be in utter disbelief, but what would happen if you came to her and you humbled yourself and you said, you know what, honey, I am so sorry. I, I, I just, I, I, I was wrong. That was wrong. What would her response be? What would you do with my husband? Who are you? Who is this man? I have yet to counsel a couple that is willing to humble themselves, submit to one another out of reverence for Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is at the center of the marriage, you're doing it as unto the Lord. I'm going to close. Some of you guys are going, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Please bring this in for a close. So uncomfortable. I want to close with an exhortation first to the husbands. And please know, and you see it there on the screen, please know that I'm including myself in this as a husband. And every time I do a wedding, I always, it's, an, it's a healthy dynamic. I introspectively have to ask the Lord to search my own heart. And then I also will ask my wife as well. But we have to, husbands, be the man that our wives will want to respect. Can I say the same thing in a different way? Be the loving husband. Be the godly man that your wife finds irresistible. (laughs) Love her as Christ loved the church and selflessly give of yourself to her. Greater love has no man that he lays his life down for, his li- for a, a friend, for his wife. When she's on the receiving end of that kind of love, she will, I mean, wow! You know what your only regret will be? Is that you didn't humble yourself earlier. I always know I've made a great decision when my only regret is that I didn't make it sooner. And early on in my marriage, I I just had to get alone before the Lord concerning my marriage relationship. I mean, I love my wife. I love her so much. I I was telling our 12-year-old daughter, Sabia, this last week, I love your mom more today than I loved her when we first got married. And that's, that's true. The love has grown and matured. And by the way, can I just parenthetically say, guys, your, your sons, <laughs> they need to see you love their moms this way. They need to see it modeled. They need to see what a godly Christian marriage relationship should be like. Because if the Lord tarries and they grow up and they get married, 
it's not what's been taught, it's what's been caught. It's how they see you treat their mom, how they see you love their mom. One last thing, and this is to the wife, and please hear me out on this. You do need to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Okay, pastor, with all due respect, um, if you knew my husband, you would not say that. Okay. Let the Lord deal with him. I had someone share with me just last week, in fact, said, uh, wives, submit to your husbands and then duck, and then God will. <laughs> oh, ha, I got the scars to prove it, let me tell you. Now there is a, a qualifier here. If he is asking you to do anything that is unbiblical, immoral, certainly illegal, absolutely not. You do not submit to your husband if it's unbiblical, illegal, or immoral. But if you're at odds, and you're at this crossroads, and you're in disagreement with him, and by, can, ah, listen, guys, God has given your wife, you know, we call it women's intuition. I, I don't, it, it's discernment that God has given to the wife as a helpmeet to the man. Oh, how many times I wish I would have listened to my wife when she said, you know, I just don't have a peace about this. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have a peace about this? This is a no brainer. I'm the man of the house. I'm going to make the decision. She's like, okay. And I would always regret it in retrospect. Oh, would to God that I would have listened to her. God was trying to speak to me through her as my helpmeet, putting up the stop sign, don't do it. I wish I could have the money that I invested that she did not feel a piece about us investing. Probably pay off part of the mortgage on the <laughs> church property with uh, that much money. She just, I just, I don't, I don't feel a piece about it. And here's the problem, guys, we're, we're so logical. Well, why not? I just, it, I just don't feel a piece about it. Well, we want a double space printed out, two page explanation, logically as to the reasons why I shouldn't do this. They can't do that. They just have this sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that we as men do not have. And God has given that to them. And that's when you as the husband, out of reverence for Christ, submit to them. But let's say you're at a crossroad and this decision, I mean, you guys are just button heads. And the husband is determined to go ahead and move forward, and you submit to him. Again, it's not illegal, it's not immoral, it's not unbiblical, okay? So wives, you submit as unto the Lord, then here's what you do. <laughs> first of all, pray for your husband, okay? That's the first thing. But secondly, trust the Lord. The Lord's going to deal with him. The Lord will deal with him in His way. If He moves forward and you're not in agreement, uh, th this is a, a practical, and I've shared this before, it has helped my wife and I over the years tremendously. We will never discuss weighty issues or ever make any important decision uh, at night, because we're always tired, and that's when it has more of a potential to end in a conflict. You know, God's mercies are new every morning. A good night's sleep can change everything. You know how it is when you, you know, argue at night, and you do let the sun go down in your anger. You wake up the next morning, you can't remember what you were fighting about, right? 
So just agree to disagree agreeably. Don't let the sun go down on your anger, because that, that's what gives the devil a foothold, right? You wake up, you're, you're seething, you're even more angry. Don't let the enemy do that. So we always wait until we're fresh. We've had our time together. We've had our time with the Lord. We've had time in prayer. We've had our coffee. Coffee helps a lot. And then that's when we tackle those decisions. Just a, uh, something that's really helped us. But wives, submit to your husbands, and then trust that the Lord will deal with him. But husbands, I just want to leave you with this lastly. And again, I include myself. Let's be men that our wives want to submit to. Let's be the man, the man of God. Let's be that husband, that godly husband, that our wife just, I mean, finds irresistible. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for these two verses. <laughs> Lord, thank you for the covenant of marriage and what it represents. Lord, I pray for the marriages in this church body and also for our online church as well. Lord, I pray for healing where there's bitterness and resentment. Lord, I pray for healing where there's been betrayal, even infidelity. Lord, I pray for the men as husbands, that Lord, You by the Holy Spirit would make us godly men, godly husbands. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen.